and welcome to the special segment of India Now. We are in conversation with retired Judge Justice Chandru. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Yes. Yes, sir. So, sir, so my first question is that you've dealt with multiple cases of police brutality in uh, as, a, as a lawyer and as a judge. So uh, what were your experiences dealing with them as a lawyer? Police brutality is not something of the um, recent origin. The very constitution of police force uh, with a limited brief of maintaining law and order and very little exposure to criminal investigation has led to several violations of human right. And when the constitution came, it tried to attempt to give the um, pre-trial accused certain rights like choice of a lawyer, information to the relatives and uh, 24 hours production before magistrate. But then um, what is called as a, in America called Miranda rule has been constitutionally guaranteed in India. Now in reality, suppose you give a phone call, he can't make any lawyer because nobody knows who is a lawyer. Therefore, it uh, invariably some lawyer who is known to the police or you are left with no lawyer because you can't afford. Then relatives mean how will they inform the relative? They may not have any uh, mechanical instrument by which they can be contacted. Secondly, when the police arrest you for something wrong reason, why would they ever want to inform you? Then, this is another question that comes. Therefore, the lawyer choice and uh, one phone call to a near relative and uh, these two are really um, e compared to the economic uh, status of the accused, they are only a um, mm, watch or a mm, theoretical right, not a practical right. Then production before 24 or said the documents can always be fudged. They never show the arrest. Uh -huh. Then in which case the 24 hour rule doesn't come into force. So the police always play some cat and mouse game on uh, these matters. The, the result was that with somebody is taken to station, what should be done with that man, police alone knows, not the law enforcing um, agencies like court, the trial magistrate or the remand magistrate. And the affordability of the um, the victim is a big factor. So the the result will be when the laws are so finely written, when the constitutional guarantees are so beautifully given. But in ground reality, it is the police which has the final say in these matters. So these three um, important pre-trial guarantee is to ensure that there is nothing untoward happen. The fourth stage comes where. Uh, judge or a magistrate remands you to a custody. Is it a police custody or a judicial custody? If it is a judicial custody, whether um, whether there are any injuries on me, whether I have been um, subject to torture, then most of the magistrate mechanically make a remand like what happened in Satankulam. Simply remand, not even knowing there were bleeding injuries on them. So there is a duty cast upon the uh, remand magistrate to question the um, accused, so-called accused, that whether he requires any uh, Ill medical treatment, whether he was ill-treated by the police. And when the police are accompanying, which accused will ever tell in his presence that he was ill-treated. Therefore, there are so many ifs and buts. So in my experience as a lawyer, later as a um, judge, that most of these rules are breached. In fact, um, the first judgment, um, uh, the, the D.K. Bosu was a state of West Bengal, where the Supreme Court has given um, 11 guidelines. We call it as 11 commandments. One of the important issues dealt with by the um, Supreme Court was that if any law enforcing agency violates these commands, they can be taken to task by issuing contempt proceedings against them. Now, D.K. Vasu is a milestone in the matter of arrest of uh, the pre-trial rights of an accused. Now, even after D.K. Vasu guideline, when the police department has issued um, guidelines that to follow this, there are some questionnaires to be filled up. Many times they fudge the questionnaire, like information to accuse, relative. They will write somebody's name who we may not even know. Then on the question of medical treatment, they will not say anything. Accused did not complain. So there are 
many many violations which are not decreasing but are increasing they are never stopping of this so who will uh, really bring the police to uh, the rule book it is only the trial court number 1 number 2 the higher constitutional court but then i in the distance of between the accused and their chances of moving the higher court very very limited so most of the time the police are guaranteed that the accused whom they are dealing with can never go to any of these agents so once in a while you may have some um, civil liberty groups or a civil liberty lawyer and or sometime a conscious magistrate who may involve but they are few and far it's not insurgeless so the greatest weakness is not the violation the greatest weakness is we do not have enough human right group to defend the rights of the accused at all stages so uh, we spoke to a couple of police officials who said that we have to turn to brutality because 90% of the people can only be dealt with brutality like they belong from certain sections of society that politeness doesn't work with them so why would say that, something like that that is because i began by saying that uh, the establishment of the police in the 18th century is only for maintaining law and order to protect the interests of the british the colonial government when crime started happening they were dealt with at the local level by the mob or the village panchayats and things like that the investigation part which is very archaic of uh, fingerprints and so many other factors the british were mainly relying upon the um, criminal tribes act where the entire tribe is a criminal and if they don't come up before the station they are the accused they are the thief or whatever it is now for a long time the democratic forces fought against the repeal of these laws and the repeal brought a new tag for them called the denotify tribe so today what the police do is instead of looking for a criminal tribe they are looking for a denotify tribe mm. so you would have seen even the film jai bhim several tribes which are originally known as criminal tribe still being haunted by the police for any cr- local crime unresolved crime or a crime where they could foist on a false case police are there so there are many sensitizing program at the higher level to the police service officers at uh, hyderabad whereas with the lower level the mindset is still not changed so if there is a theft like in that film it is only a uh, tribal in that area is first sought after and the other justification is that when the investigation is not very um, good beating or a third degree uh, torture will make them to agree to the confession what is called confession to the crime now confession to the crime fortunately the british have said that any statement given to the police during the investigation not valid acceptable but then if they confess and before a magistrate then that could be acceptable now in which case if they beat them up and then make them to agree a crime is so called crime is resolved which leads to a uh, 101 unresolved crimes also but the police gets away with murder by just making these people tougher the standard argument that only a third degree method will get them uh, the real clue is something which police trying to justify all their illegalities never authorized by the constitution the human rights standard never make them to even touch the accused there are other methods of finding out there are scientific advancement also brings several other new types of evidences but on the contrary our uh, police are trained in a very most barbaric method to um, resolve crimes that's one secondly their own uh, caste bias their own class bias is very important that they are going after the poor people and not the rich one the this will be very evident from the fact that uh, the white collar uh, offenders are treated more with kid gloves and the other types of offenders are dealt with in a different method so there is a total caste class bias among the police force that that, no, that can never be solved at all and court by their own inertia and delay really helps uh, not the uh, accused but they help the agencies who get away 
from any kind of accountability. That's a major thing that's happened. So you had said that during an interaction that what we saw in Jai Bhim is just a, a tip of the iceberg. What does the reality encompass? Many people after seeing Jai Bhim uh, always ask me, is it the end of everything? I always used to say this is neither the end nor the beginning. It was there and it continued to be there. In fact, uh, like Jai Bhim, suppose I had handled some about uh, 20 cases in my career as a lawyer. As a judge, I would have dealt with some three times more than that case. So the, it is very depressing to um, deal with such cases because it is not diminishing. The law enforcing agencies never understand that they have a duty under law to obey the law. People believe that these laws are all only written for like showpiece, uh, for certain standards. But the real obedience of law really will bring some change in their attitude, never accepted by them. The result is that uh, some of these police were encounter specialists. They are also treated as like heroes, like you saw in Hyderabad. They were garlanded, seats were distributed, ladus were distributed. Now we do not know why those boys were killed, what is the evidence against them. So you can't make the police station as a court and the inspectors as the judges to under our uh, criminal justice system, it is the judge who can impose a punishment, whether it is death penalty or a small imprisonment. It's only the court, not the police. Now, what really happens is, even for any offense, when you resort to encounter, saying that he's a history sheeter, he's a habitual offender, anti-social element, you are not trying to resolve a crime. You are trying to eliminate somebody without there being any solid proof. Even for death penalty, the courts have ruled it's only on a rarest of rare cases death penalty can be there. And the criminal law is based upon the foundation that it should be proved beyond reasonable doubt. Neither the uh, proof is available nor it is a rarest of the rare case. Either way, it is a local police who, decide, who, who decides what should be the penalty. So the pre-trial uh, torture itself is a penalty because that is not authorized by law but that is imposed by somebody who is not authorized by law. But what really happens is why is that people are after this encounter specialist? Why is that as soon as a crime comes people say there must be some encounter? The word encounter has gone into even poor people houses. Any unlettered person can say what is encounter. Now the result will be that because there is a delay in unraveling a crime, encounter becomes an instant solution. So people are after instant remedies. So as soon as a crime comes, people look for encounters. Now this has gone into the psychic process. The result is a chain reaction that they are condoned, they are let off, such police officers are let off. Or sometimes they are given bravery awards of uh, dealing with antisocial elements. So I am only saying that rather than court coming down heavily upon these anti-social activities of the law enforcing agency, the delay by court itself is a license for anti-social activities. People believe that nothing will be happening in court. It will take ages for the court to dissolve. Therefore, the local police can seal with the problem. Now, it is becomes a chain reaction that uh, no action will be taken against the erring police, therefore they are happy. No officers will be ever held up for their accountability, therefore they are left free. The courts are also thinking it is not their job to reform such systems. From time to time you have so many seminars and workshops, but then it never um, goes to the level of sensitizing these forces. What we now need is a radical change of change in our investigation certain amount of um, civil society having a check on the law enforcing agency, then the um, accountability of the higher officers to be fixed at all stages, and then the immunity given to police from being prosecuted, even though they may be involved in several anti-social activity, that should be removed, and there must be a manual, method by which such officers can also be prosecuted. For example, in section 4 of the SCST Act, the officer who is uh, conniving with an offence can also be proceeded. 
recently one supreme court said you must take permission from the superintendent of police ssp to prosecute now supreme court said nothing is required if they commit an offense they will also be held up today that situation is not there available in respect of ipc offense there is a 197 giving them blank check full protection that nothing will happen even if they are found fault with because the government has to give sanction for prosecution so there are many many reports of the uh, law commissions and police commissions are gathering dust from far from being implemented there is no um, mental uh, make up to implement these orders so the net result is the poor continue to suffer mm -hmm. and uh, one jai bhim may show a winner from a tribal family but not all tribals will in every time even today in dindivanam the same irula families are agitating against imposition of false cases against three of their family members there is an agitation going on in dindivanam so the agitation is more or less like another jai bhim film arrested kept in lock up no case file tortured and then lot of agitation they have been let out but then they are pursuing the false, false cases so now we think um, one solution could be that if these people who are uh, not very much organized if they are able to organize themselves and there are some voluntary agencies to support some civil liberty group to support it may get this is what even the chief minister after seeing jai bhim said if there is a uh, honest police officer and a fighting lawyer and a judge with integrity many of these crimes may come down so he himself is not for a structural reform he think that individual um, hard changes can bring some change that that's a wishful thinking but then at least it come from a head of the state ceo therefore it have some value i think uh, the fight for uh, institutional level human rights is a need of our sir the chairman of the tamil nadu welfare commission of the record told us that police brutality is a sad reality and it's always going to happen irrespective of what time comes it's always going to be there your comments sir. highly developed western countries uh, your son that floyd case in america mm -hmm. but they are few and far not like eternally you are living under the dadagiris of tanas that that can never be the problem so we are not saying elimination we are saying minimizing what is required today is to minimize this kind of a, uh, events in the station so that requirely require as a change in the system that uh, that has to be i think this uh, film also in a way i opener where people think that uh, you can go to court you can raise such issues money is not the criteria there are people who are willing to help and now we have a legal aid to poor we have a battle of lawyers to work for the poor and if you have a very sensitized judiciary i think you can um, in fact i always used to say it is justice uh, p s misra who was a judge of the division bench senior judge who was responsible for all this during his tenure of 5 years he has dealt with hundreds of cases like this and was able to haul up the police from going haywire so the, i think in this system the judge plays a very crucial role and if he is a sensitized judge i think uh, in fact the police were having demonstration against him they wanted him to be removed from the portfolio so even when he can prove that one man can do the all this i think if the judiciary as a whole more sensitized more proactive more mm. pro social justice i think 50% of the problem can be solved but then the other 50 you need to have institutionalized framework for human right activities that we do not have we have individuals we have some ngos but it is not institutionalized in the sense like every bar having a human rights cell or every um, area having some concerned group of people fighting for this we don't have that so i think we'll have to work in that uh, 
if we can't stop this at least we can prevent this from fine a final question i think this was absolutely insightful but we'd like to know about what inspired you uh, to take on such an embarking journey such a journey that has transformed various tribal lives in the past like we saw in jay bhim sir so what has been your motivation to take on this journey my motivation is that i i i was a leftist from my student days i had joined the marxist party and uh, it is a party which works for the kisan with the work for the workers work for the underprivileged therefore our entire education from the student movement and later trade union and lawyer life we have been uh, trained to defend the rights of the poor and underprivileged and there is that training which also when we became lawyers we also became a one person army to such a defense of thing it is a consciousness it is a motivation of a left movement which gave us all this to fight forever and it is a training which we got as a lawyer helped us in the as a judge also we continue we thought this is a extension of that uh, and we never forgot our basic lessons so that was justice chandru with his um, with his insightful words this is isha mishra signing off